we're back for another video on uh, solutions for the upcoming test. The last time we worked with uh, exponentials of various bases, mostly three, and then we did an investment problem. We're going to be working with the natural exponential this time. We just need to remember that the natural exponential is about 2.718. Okay, that's, that number is about that. Um, for this, I suggest just using 2.7 as the value. Okay, uh, those those of you purists out there, you don't come looking for me. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna graph this, uh, and that's the first little thing. Um, so we set up an axis, and if you're actually using a calculator, you can use that value of 2.7. For me, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug in some interesting numbers, uh, numbers that I know how to compute. So <laughs> um, I'm going to plug in for x natural log, this, this may seem like cheating, <laughs> natural log of, of 1. And then I'm going to plug in natural log of 2, natural log of 3. If you had a calculator, you just plug in like 1, 2, 3, and then negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. For me, this is what I'm plugging in. Uh, I'll also plug in 0. I'll also plug in uh, negative natural log of 1. <laughs> okay. And that's funny, but uh, never mind. Um, negative natural log of 2. And negative natural log of 3. Uh, this is just to give us an idea of certain things that we'll, we'll be doing here. So here we've got negative e to the negative x. Okay, so um, what is the natural log of 1? It's a good question. It's 0. That's why it was funny what I wrote down earlier. The negative, uh, the natural log of one, is zero. Okay, what power of e gives you one? It's zero. So this is overall zero. So what we're doing is we're plugging in zero. <laughs> so this is negative e to the negative zeroth power, which is negative one. Okay. How about the negative natural log of 2. Well, I don't know what that is, but when you plug that in, here's what you get. So again, if, if you if you are using a calculator to do this, like I suggested, just plug in like values like 1, 2, 3, negative 1, 2, 3, and 0, and you'll you'll get a, a functional graph. For me, I, I don't have that I don't have that uh, nice calculator in front of me. So when I plug in 0, I get obviously negative 1. For this one, natural log of 2. Well, natural log of 2 is a little bit bigger than 0. Okay, it's less than 1, but it's it's some number that's, you know, we'll call it right here, natural log of 2. What do I get? Well, when I plug it in, I get natural log of 2 up here. I can carry the negative to the top of the 2, can I? So this becomes natural log of 2 to the negative first, which is natural log of 1 half. Right? Well, what is e to the natural log of 1 half? Well, those cancel out, don't they? So this is 1 half with the negative sign on it. So I plug in this and I get 1 half. And that was, again, if I plugged in natural log of 2. So uh, what I would keep doing is keep doing this whole process, right? I would plug in negative, sorry, I'd plug in natural log of 3. I would then carry this negative up to here to make it 3 to the negative first, which gives me natural log of 1 third. The e and the natural log cancel out, and this gives me negative 1 third. So here's my next one. It's not evenly spaced, but that's how I'm graphing it. Uh, negative one third. 
So over here, you get this general trend where it's just getting closer and closer and closer to the x-axis. Okay, how about on the left? Well, when we plug in these negative natural logs, or when we plug in zero, that's funny, because we already did. <laughs> We're not gonna do that. When we plug in these values, um, what happens? We get negative e to the negative of the negative natural log of two. And negative e to the negative of the negative natural log of three. Well, the negatives cancel out in the powers now. This is negative e to the natural log of two. And the e's cancel with the natural logs. So this is just negative two. And this is negative three. It's because these negatives cancel. And then the e cancels with the natural log to leave you with just this and this. There's still a negative sign in front, so that's why there's still negative two and negative three. But over here, negative natural log of two, negative natural log of three, negative two, negative three. Our graph would more or less do something like this. Okay, so it's with a calculator, it, you'll get a more accurate graph, you'll get a more realistic experience, but uh, without one, <laughs> you pick and choose what you can put in. Okay, all right, next problem. Which investment would earn more money? This is a great question. Uh, five and one eighth percent compounded twice per year or 5% compounded continuously? So the continuous situation is this. We've got some principal amount, I don't know what it is, times e to the rate, which is 0 0.05 times the time it's invested, t. Okay, I, I don't know the time, I don't know the principal amount, so that's what I've got. So this is the continuous setting. The next setting is the one we had before. So it's not continuous, so I'll just call it compounding. We've got the principal amount, I don't know what that is, times one plus the rate, 0 0.05125 over two. That's the number of times it compounds per year, all raised to the two t power. Don't know what the time is. So how can you assess this? How can you determine which investment would earn more? Well, it turns out you could just experiment with this. Uh, one thing you'll notice, uh, some some sort of nice things that you can notice is you could look at a ratio of these things. You could look at p times e to the 0.05 t divided by p times etc. You can look at that ratio. What I'm saying is take this divided by that. And if you get a number, if you plug in some t's, if you get a number that's bigger than one, well then this is bigger, isn't it? So that would that would give you more money. Right? So you'll notice if you take the ratio the P's cancel out, so the amount you invest doesn't matter. What matters is this and this. So you should do some experiments. Okay, you don't have uh, enough machinery in your wheelhouse at this point to um, to tell me for sure which of these earns more. But you do have the machinery to give a suggestion based on just plugging in a few things, just testing the waters. Say like for example, oh I don't know, invest a hundred bucks, even though I just said it doesn't matter how much you invest. Right, and oh I don't know, let it go for 10 years. Well, whatever, you know, whatever earns more money in 10 years, that's the one that earns more. Or maybe you pick a hundred years. You just wanna be sure. <laughs> Whichever one earns more, that's it. You can do sorts of things like that, right? You don't even have to take a ratio of these guys. Um, if you really, really, really wanted to achieve 
you know, sort of like the superior ribbon if you were trying to solve this problem. You'd, you'd need a extra, extra mm, tools at your disposal. So that's all you got, right? That's what you can do. Just do an experiment with some numbers and see what you get. And with that, we're done with section 4.2. I'll be back uh, in a bit with problems from section 4.3, 4.4, 4.5 and then in chapter five. Uh, I'm gonna be taking a little break here, uh, so I'll probably come back to this tomorrow, okay? Uh, so I hope that helps, and I will see you in the next one.